Oh my god. Huyan is back, and in a big way. Big? Eh? Fine. The Huyan Giano WH1409, which I'll be just referring to as the Giano from now on because damn, is the latest non-display tablet from Huyan, and good lord is it massive. With 2048 levels of pressure, 12 hotkeys, wireless or wired connectivity, and a stupidly large active area for drawing, is this the perfect tablet for you? Let's find out. The last tablet I looked at by Huion was the DWH69, which I was a really big fan of in nearly every way. The Giano takes everything about that device that was great and improves on pretty much the entire package. The build quality of the Giano is fantastic, a sturdy mix of matte and piano black plastics that don't give her flex, and with a fit and finish to the build that goes far beyond its 159 price point. It's worth noting that this is far below the asking price of $4.99 that a similarly priced and spec Intuos Pro sells for, while having a larger active area than the Intuos to boot. Huion's claim to fame is its value proposition, and here it once again is proving to be massively aggressive with its value per dollar. Speaking of active area, the drawing portion of the Giano dominates the face of the device as one would expect, measuring a whopping 13.8 inches wide by 8.6 inches tall, dwarfing even the DWH69, meaning your work area is similar in size to that of an average 15 inch laptop screen. Flanking the device on the left is all the input options for the tablet. A simple on-off switch that enables the wireless connectivity, LEDs for monitoring pen activity, wireless status, and battery life indicators when in wireless mode, and the dongle that plugs into your PC conveniently can be stored in the bottom of the Giano itself, meaning you'd have to try pretty hard to lose it while on the road. Interestingly, the dongle is also an 8GB flash drive, allowing you to store work files with the tablet itself if you jump between machines. A pretty handy feature in my opinion. Powering the Giano is a 2000 mAh battery that's rated for 40 hours of use and charges in about 6, which I'd say is pretty solid, but I'd still prefer something a little bit longer. If for example you're a freelancer pulling 8 hour days, you're probably going to be charging this thing more than you'd like. That being said, I've been working off the factory charge for the last couple days I've been testing this thing, so for more casual users you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Under the LEDs are 12 hotkeys separated into 3 groups of 4, thankfully swapping out the awkward capacitive buttons from the DWH69 for more traditional physical buttons. They're a little mushy feeling but they work just fine, and having a dozen of them to work with means your keyboard can take a break while you're getting stuff done. Something that leaves little room for surprises is the pen included with the Giano. It's exactly the same pen Huion has been shipping with both of its devices that I tested last year. A simple battery operated pen with a spring tip to bring it out of sleep mode, a rocker on the side for two functions, and a proprietary charger where the eraser would be on a Wacom. Normally, having a subpar pen experience compared to Wacom has been the prime caveat to saving a significant chunk of change when looking at these alternative tablets. However, the market has started to shift since last year, with Microsoft's new Surface Pens having eraser functionality, and even a $500 pen display from Monoprice having both tilts and eraser functionality. These deficiencies are going to become more jarring the longer they're ignored, and competitors continue to bring their A-game. As it stands right now, Huion isn't falling behind the pack, but it's clear the space is starting to shift. I don't think this pen will be all that acceptable come this time next year. So that's the design, but that's only half the story. How does the Giano actually perform? My first surprise, and a sign of good things to come, came from driver installation. While I haven't had the best of luck with Huion driver installations in the past, I had zero issues getting the Giano set up on my test rig here. I ran the XE and I was good to go. The Giano doesn't come with an installer disc, but instead has everything stored on the flash drive built into the wireless dongle. At first, I was having a lot of difficulty drawing with Giano and I couldn't figure out why, only to eventually realize that it was completely my fault. The active area is a 16x10 aspect ratio, not 16x9 like most modern displays. The only computers nowadays that still use 16x10 are MacBook Pros though, so considering the target audience for this thing, that was probably a good call, but for most PC users you're going to be weirded out in the beginning. Luckily, a quick jump into the driver settings and checking off the option to scale the active area to your display's aspect ratio clears this problem up without any headaches. Speaking of the drivers, there aren't many surprises here either. The driver is basically identical to the other Huion devices I've tested. 
This is another prime area that lags behind a Wacom device. Features like the shortcut wheel having nothing analogous here, but if your primary concern is merely making marks on your canvas, it has all the essentials you'd need, like pen pressure adjustments, calibration, hotkey mapping, and a scratch pad to test your settings. A device like this lives or dies by its pen performance though, and I'm happy to say in this regard that Giano delivers. With a full 2048 levels of pressure, getting dynamic strokes is a breeze, able to get clean, crisp line art, and easily paint without any issues at all. The texture on the active area is smooth, but with just enough bite to allow you to be confident in your mark making. Maybe the texture is a bit smoother than Intuos, but it's a far cry from glass, so overall, it's pretty comfortable. I have to apologize for not having much footage of me actually using this device in action, but even after the couple days of testing, I've personally found drawing with the Giano to be a challenge. Not due to any fault of its own, it's every bit as great a performer as the DWH69 that came before it, but because I tend to draw so small in real life, I continually underestimated the space I had and wasn't drawing my strokes large enough. Whether this is a hang-up of mine personally, or something others will encounter as well, I can't really say, but I figured it was worth noting for prospective buyers. I don't know if other people will be running into this problem. I think this tablet is a great option for people who feel cramped with their current device. That, however, has never been me, even with my tiny intros and bamboos of past because, again, I draw microscopically by default. So the Giano isn't really a product for me, but from a purely technical perspective, it works fantastically and is far and away my best experience with a Huion product so far, outshining even the DWH69, which I really enjoyed. Driver installation issues seem to have been finally ironed out in this release based on my painless setup, the touch hotkeys on the last tablet have been swapped out for actual keys, and the display, which was assuredly robbing the DWH69 of battery life, has been replaced with a more pedestrian set of LEDs, which just seems more practical given the fact that this thing runs on a battery. Overall, I'm really impressed with what Huion has brought to market here with the Giano WH1409, convoluted naming aside. While the Giano lacks the multi-touch options, eraser, and tilt functions of the Intuos Pro and has a comparatively sparse feature set in its driver, I think most would find it hard to argue that those additions warrant the additional $340 the large Intuos Pro is asking for. If you just want a big space to draw on, you'd be hard pressed to find a better value than Huion's latest offerings. Just because it doesn't mesh with my personal drawing habits doesn't mean it's not a stellar offering from the company. If it sounds like something you'd be interested in, you almost assuredly will have a good time. So, my name is Tommy Oliver, and you guys are watching Rebel Pixels, a channel all about empowering and passioning the DIY creator here on the web. If that's you, if you live and die by art, you need to hit that subscribe button below and join the rebellion. Every week, I make videos just like this one, whether it's technical videos showcasing products that I think will help you guys make your best art you can on a budget, or if it's something kind of more advice-like, uh, kind of helping you sidestep the pitfalls I've fallen into on my path to becoming an artist here on the web. If that sounds like something you're interested in, subscribe, join the family. I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. So there's a lot of products you guys are asking for in the comments to have me cover. Unfortunately, I'm only one guy. And I don't have a lot of money, hence me looking at all these alternatives in the first place. So if there's something you guys want to see and I can't seem to get it from the vendor, any help to get it in my hands from you guys, I'll definitely put all that money back into the channel and show you more products you're interested in. So until next time, I'm Tommy Oliver. This is Rebel Pixels reminding you guys, you might be indie. That doesn't mean that we're alone. Catch you all next week.